Jared Pena is a mixologist. Yeah, sure, a mixologist you get excited about. Born and raised in San Antonio and has been an integral part of the food and drink renaissance in San Antonio as well. As a Bar Smarts graduate, Bar Smarts, capital letters, he transformed the cocktail culture in places such as Pesca, Bohannon's, Le Midi, and the Green Lantern. The historic Esquire Tavern, under the leadership of Peña, was nominated as a semi-finalist, did you know this, for the James Beard Awards Outstanding Bar Program. In the same year, Peña was also recognized as rising star mixologist by StarChefs.com. Last year, he opened his own concept, the Brooklynite, known for its award-winning cocktails. It's attention to customer service and a uniquely designed atmosphere. And beyond the Brooklynite, he has also founded the Spirits Enthusiasts of Texas. That's an organization with aims to cultivate a cocktail culture by the means of education. Please welcome mixologist Jerry Pena. I can't see any of you, that's, that's pretty fantastic. And by the way, I think Hipster Bunny has been into my bar. Well, uh, I am not a mixologist. Wait, one more time. Whoop. Okay, sorry. There you go, boom. I am not a mixologist. I'm a bartender. I'm very proud of what I do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My craft has been around for over 200 years. 200 years, and it's, it never came from outside the United States. It never came uh, from anywhere but the United States. It's as American as apple pie. The craft bar scene, the bar scene in general, was something that was created at a necessity over 200 years ago. And I'm proud of the fact that I'm able to reproduce cocktails that have been done for over 200 years. By the way, you're gonna see all these these uh, picks, and it's not about what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is my craft. My craft is something that is truly special to me. Um, over 200 years ago, there was a, the first definition of cocktail came from the Colombian uh, repository, and it was called, uh, the definition for the cocktail was a spirit, sugar, bitters, and waters. But how did that term cannibalize everything else? And I can slowly get to that as we go in further into the conversation. The, the craft itself didn't get, really grow legs until the end of the 19th century. And it died abruptly, 1920. It was the year that Prohibition was created. Before Prohibition, when, I, when you were a bartender, it took three years to become a bartender. It wasn't just something, well, I'm gonna make shots, I'm gonna add Jaeger, I'm gonna add Red Bull, I'm gonna call it a fancy drink. No, it was actually a craft that took a long time to perfect. It was as prestigious as lawyers, doctors, and real estate people. Yeah. <laughs> I did that. And um, I'm proud of that. And all that was lost to prohibition. And there was a few brave souls that continued this tradition. And one of which, his name is David Wondrich, who is probably the, the godfather of the cocktail movement in the in, uh, United States. With, uh, he did huge amounts of research, historical, uh, he was, he was a, a teacher in history, and he looked up and researched cocktail history which was something that probably didn't, no one ever really thought would ever exist. And his book is called Imbibe and is now the Bible for cocktail bartenders. It is the Bible. And because of that, I'm able to recreate these drinks time and time again. And it all started, and it's a funny story, it all started by accident, as all great things. I was working at Valencia Hotel. Does anyone want to be to, been to V-Bar? It was really cool back in the day. Still is. That sounded bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, and I was uh, approached by the bar manager and he asked me, he's like, you're the chosen one. 
you're going to bartend. I'm like, okay, cool. And that was a, a turning point. The next turning point was me going, moving to PESCA. And I was approached by the manager at PESCA and asked me, would you be willing to come and bartend at PESCA? And I was like, yes, I'd love to. He's like, but the general manager says, and I like you. The general manager now is my friend, and I can tell you his name. His name is Luciano. And uh, he did not want me to work there, and Luciano took off for one month. And while he was gone, I snuck in there and got the job. And because of that, that helped me get in, in, in front of Partida Tequila. When I started working at Partida Tequila, I became their ambassador here in Texas. I got to travel all over the United States. It was one of the most amazing jobs that you can ever imagine. I got paid to drink alcohol. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> it's not funny. Actually, it really is funny. So while traveling, and this is probably the, the best experience for me, because while traveling across the country, I got to meet some of the best bartenders in the world. People like Jacques Bezenhuden out, out of San Francisco, people like Bobby Hugel, who is my hero in the cocktail world, and he owns the Anvil in Houston, which has got rated one of the top bars in the country. Indirectly, I learned from these gentlemen, and I brought something to San Antonio, along with people like Sasha Petrosky from Bohannon's, to, uh, to a city that was sleeping. If you look three years ago, and there's, I, I know most of these people in here in this room, and you can actually, you can actually, you would agree with me that three years ago, there was not much going on. You had Bohannon's, you had Limity, which is no longer there, unfortunately, and you had uh, Green Lantern and Monami. But other than that, I mean, the mass amount of people did not drink cocktails. How many places can you go right now and you can tell me that there's a Moscow meal there? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Heard that. <laughs> the, the important part of all this is the fact that what we started technically six years ago, now it came into fruition, it is now in full steam ahead. You can go to places like Bariba Cantina downtown and get a craft cocktail. But this all could be short-lived. And the, the reason why I don't like the word mixologist is because I think it sounds completely pretentious. I think it is, I mean, I, don't, I didn't go to school or university to become a mixologist. I just studied and drank a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> As my wife is my witness. She, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> Anyways, so the actual craft itself really kind of went full steam ahead with, with the Esquire Tavern. And then that's where most of us in our, in our craft got, most of our, got the actual legs to move forward and to open up, oh wow, sorry. <laughs> to actually move forward and actually do some fantastic cocktails. But back to the word mixologist, to me, the most important part of my job is not making really cool craft cocktails and dressing cool, it's about service. And that's what I'm in. I'm in the service industry. Thank you. you. If you want to hang on to that, give it up for the first guy to really work the stage here at the Josephine. I'm about to. Okay, I'm okay, got a couple questions. I thought, I mean, I was a bartender in college. I'm, I'm sorry. Thought, but now I feel insecure and, and sad because <laughs> I didn't you? know, I didn't know that went into it. Now, when you talk about that, there's a good... These guys are great bartenders. What makes a great bartender? Consistency. Um, the ability to be able to talk to a guest and, and th thank God. Can, thank, can I have a blue spot, please? <laughs> the ability to, to give great service and produce a, a consistent cocktail. It's not about just using crazy ingredients. It's about, it's a craft. And it's all about using precise do measurements. You, do you do the whole thing where you throw it up in the air and the coyote ugly thing in the time? <laughs> Should I even mention that or is that like offensive? If you pay me, I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what is, I thought Moscow Mule was some kind of sex thing. Is that not, what is a Moscow Mule? It could be. I know, mean, I'm a little out of the, out of the. Uh, I'm sorry, we're working uh, purple now. It's after nine. I'm married okay. now. <laughs> uh, and do you drink while you're bartending? I think it's important to have at least to sip your cocktails. Because when you're making your cocktail and you're stirring, you have to try it out. Uh, so, and, and so yes. Uh, how about the, uh, the persona, the, uh, the cocktail suspender thing? And do you wear sleeve garters now and then with the hat and the deal and the thing? Cock 
That wasn't funny. <laughs> I didn't yes. hear that, but I'm frightened a little bit. All right, and uh, where can we see some of your work and find out more about you and what you were uh, your well, tequila? Or what? Uh, you can come see me at the Brooklyn at 516 Brooklyn Avenue, and uh, I will I man the bar three nights a week, and I'll make you a fantastic cocktail along with any of my staff because they're very well trained. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, for not a mixologist, bartender extraordinaire. Congratulations, thank you very much, Jared Pena. Yeah, I actually was a bartender at Uncle Sam's in, uh, when I was in college, it was a disco bar, and we had a John Travolta disco light, a disco dance light contest when I was there, so that's how old I am. But, do you know what's in a slow, comfortable screw? Seriously. Slow gin fizz. It's an awkward moment. Okay. You people are so unhip, and here I thought you were...